Doc Rich back at it again, baby. And um, we got Jordan Peterson calmly dismantles feminism. Several of y'all have told me to check out Jordan Peterson for quite a while now. And today I was going back through, you know, the comment section, just reading through some comments to find some stuff to check out. And I came across another comment. Hey, yo, I think you should check out Jordan Peterson. You might actually like him. I think you, no, I think it said like you, you, uh, I think you would actually like him. Shout out, shout out to Jimmy too. Uh, if, if I remember the, the, the name correctly, that commented that. But, um, so yeah, here we are. Uh, Jordan Peterson calmly dismantles feminism. Like, share, comment, hit the subscribe button if you're new. Uh, go and join the Discord server too. It's the first link that's down below. Let's go. One of our guests of the day, the other one today, is a man you may recognize, or maybe you don't. Jordan Peterson has achieved that rare feat. <laughs> you may recognize, or maybe you don't. I think those are the only two options. Feet, becoming a global superstar academic. So how did he become so well known? He first came to national prominence in Canada in 2016 in a debate about new laws on gender identity. Bill C-16 made it an... He became popular in 2016. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> about new laws on gender identity. Bill C-16 made it an offence to refuse to call someone by their chosen gender pronoun. Jordan Peterson argued that this would infringe free speech, while some supporters oh, of the bill shit. said he was advocating prejudice. From there, his YouTube star took off, and he has now over one million subscribers. And I identify as um, daddy. When you address me, Call me daddy. It's an offense if you say anything different. And his videos where he talks everything from identity politics, which we've touched on, to the Bible, to Disney movies, have been viewed over 150 million times. Gosh, that's about the same number of views we have on this program. Ha. Last year, he supported ex-Google employee James Damore, who had been fired for suggesting men and women have different interests due to biological differences. And his latest... Whoa, whoa, ooh, ooh, ooh. Let me make sure I read that. Suggesting men and women have different ex Google employee James Damore, who had been fired for suggesting men and women have different interests due to biological differences. You got fired for that? And his latest book, 12 Rules for Life, has taken him on a global tour promoting his ideas. And just this week, he sold out the 1000 seater Emmanuel Center around the corner here in Westminster. Um, so Jordan, you've done endless interviews. You've been publicizing, yeah. you've been publicizing your book and they've generated plenty of heated debate. And I actually sold out the Apollo. It had 5,000 seats. All right, stop boasting. Um, <laughs> do you think Talk though, because shit. of the heat that has been generated, that your views have been misrepresented at times? Oh, definitely. But that's, you know, that's part and parcel of the process. I did take a very, um, uh, forceful stance, let's say, against some of the excesses of the radical left-wingers, and it's in their best interest to paint me as uh, somehow a figure of the extreme right, because then I don't have to be contended with. But, I mean, it's easy for people's views to be oversimplified in a very large public debate. I mean, in terms of some of the issues, I mean, you say you've been uh, painted as, a, as a, an extreme right-winger. No, some or, people or, have tried yeah. that. Not very successfully, but they've tried it. And you came to prominence. Bro, bro, and, and I know it's in the title, but just watching him and listening to him say this stuff so calmly. <laughs> it's kind of funny, honestly. He's like, no, yeah, um, a few people have tried it, just, you know, not not, not successfully. I just, <laughs> he's just so smooth. Um, in part over your opposition to this law that we just talked about yeah. in Canada, proposing the use of preferred pronouns for transgender people. Mm -hmm. Just for clarity. Mandating them. Yeah. Right. That Saying that you issue. should do it. No, but, that you had to do it. Uh, right, you had to do it by right. law. But just for clarity, do you think a trans woman is a real woman? <laughs> I don't really like the way those questions are formulated. You know, I don't... Smart man. Smart man. I feel like that's like a... Like, you're, you're, you're fishing for, 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 for trouble. You know what I mean? Like, you, you want him to say the wrong thing or, you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know what that means. What do you mean a real woman? Well, mm -hmm. I'm asking you, in Smooth. your mind, I love you know, it. depends I love what you it. think a real woman is. But do you think a trans woman is a woman? What, what is a woman? No. Why not? Because I think that women 
are capable, generally speaking, of having babies, and they have female genitalia, and they have an XX chromosome, and, and I think the biological markers are relevant. It doesn't necessarily mean that I don't think that people should be treated with respect and dignity if they happen not to fit easily into a gender category. That's a different issue. Right. Want it. Want it. Um, regardless of whether or not you, like you said, you smoothly fit into either category, you shouldn't be treated with any, any disrespect. You know what I mean? Um, the goal should be to, to respect everybody. But, but it's a matter of that, definition. And, and I actually think it's a foolish argument in some sense. Because what do you mean by real? Well, I mean, you've just clarified that, though. You, you, you don't think um, that a trans woman is a uh, woman. And do you, do you think that ooh. that is what is behind or explains your opposition to this idea of a law mandating you to use a no. preferred pronoun is because you don't actually believe that that's the truth, that a trans woman is a woman and therefore you can't use that pronoun? No, that's not my argument at really? all. Really? Yeah, really. My yeah, argument is that the no, government I know what your shouldn't compel is. voluntary speech. No, but I know what your argument is, and no, you've but made it very really clearly. It. No, but, but behind, that's exactly it. There's but the no motivation behind, behind it. There's no motivation it. behind it. But you don't believe I wouldn't the put everything on my li online in my life to take the stance I did, unless I had thought that through very deeply. And I've thought it through very deeply. There aren't hidden motivations that have to do with some arbitrary prejudice against trans people. Okay. It's purely, pure and simply this. There's never been a time in English common law history where the government compelled speech and the Canadian government dared to do that. And that was unacceptable. And they masked it with this show of, of compassion for the oppressed. And I don't buy it. Right. But you would. I, I, I do support freedom of speech. I Listen, and, and like he said, if you, I, don't, I don't care who it's for. It's for black folks. Like, nah, son, freedom of speech. No, nah, I'm, listen. Now, I'm not saying, hey, you know, there's 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 not going to be any repercussions behind, you know, you 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 saying the hard R. I ain't saying you might not get jaw jacked. Somebody I'm not saying somebody might not put you to sleep. You free to say it. There might be some consequences that come behind it. That's all. You know, I'm just, just saying that's all. But, yeah, I'm all for freedom of speech, man. I'm, you know, all seriousness. Um. That's just crazy. I think you said at an individual level, mm. if somebody Wouldn't asked have. you, if you know, somebody asked you to use a particular pronoun, you would do mm. so. Well, I have. You have. Yes. Right. Fine. Yes. Let's talk about feminism. Are you a feminist? Uh, no, not as it's currently defined. Certainly not. No. Uh, well, in any other definition. Well, I think that anybody who doesn't think that the the competitive landscape should be opened up for equality of opportunity is not thinking, and so. Everyone's interests are better served if people have as equal access to opportunity to display their talents and to manifest their talents in the world as possible. So in that sense, certainly. But feminism now, it's as far, and this is why it's so deeply unpopular, a very small minority of women in the UK identify as feminists. And the reason for that is it's primarily become an ideological weapon. And it's an ideology that I don't, I, I detest actually the ideology that it's associated with, collectivist ideology. Right. I mean, OK, and that's your view about feminism. Aisha, are you a feminist? Oh, absolutely. I'm a very proud uh, feminist. And when I was um, a special advisor in government... Bro, I, listen. <laughs> this interview lady, hey, she, she smooth. She just... I, I'll give her credit. She kind of, like, leads him... Or she's trying to, like, lead him into, like, certain topics and discussions, like... Yo, uh, how do you feel about feminists? And she knew, like, right after she was gonna talk or let the woman who I I I, uh, I forgot I forgot the this 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 young lady's name, um, but she knew she was going to her right after. <laughs> uh, feminist, and when I was um, a special advisor in government, I worked on women Aisha. and equality issues, and I was very proud actually of a piece of legislation I got on the statute book with my former boss Harriet Harman, the Equality Act. Uh, in 2010, which strengthened our anti-discrimination um, laws. And I fought very hard to get more women into public life, into the Labour Party. And yeah, and uh, yeah, I'm very, very proud of being a feminist, hence my pink dress. Oh, well, <laughs> all right. Um, obviously reverting to type then Absolutely, in the pink dress. Absolutely, well. Um, hmm. You would like men to regain or reclaim their strength physically, mentally and morally. Is that broadly correct? 
I would say morally, fundamentally, but I think the other things go along with that. Right, and, and if that But it is... isn't men precisely who I'm, who I'm speaking to, it's, it's people. I'm a clinical psychologist. I'm actually interested in individuals, and I'm interested in their fortification against tragedy. You know, every time I do an interview, the interview is always political. It's always mm. political. Well, the, cl the clue is in the title of this program. <laughs> we are the Daily Oh, Politics. no, no, fair enough. No, 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 <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. And I'm, I'm not casting aspersions <laughs> at this program, but the fundamental news that's important about what I'm doing isn't the political element. And the people who but talk what? to me don't talk politically. They well, say they've watched but, but my part, lectures. But part and of that it is, sorry, is mm. that I think for a lot of people, the kind of personal does become the, 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 the political. Or well, the political becomes the personal. Yeah, and I think in terms of the... Yeah, the, but the, in the, this I, situation, a lot of people are wrong because primarily what's happening is people are watching my lectures and as a consequence, their lives are improving dramatically. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure they are. I'm sure people are like, have had a huge conversion after it's and they're much conversion. happier once they've been... It's not a conversion. Been. But it's, what, it's what I would like to do is, is kind of almost... I think at the moment, the discussion about feminism is very d d divisive and it, sometimes it can sort of be like, Okay, men have to lose and women have to gain. Actually, mm -hmm. everybody has a lot to gain mm. by greater equality. Now, whether you get the equality of outcome that you want, I think only time will tell. But certainly, equality of opportunity is is very important. And actually, well, we can agree a lot on that. and a lot of men would would benefit. Absolutely, absolutely, uh, equality of opportunity. I can't promise you the outcome, but I can promise you a fair opportunity. You know? Yeah. I, I, I listen. I I one hundred percent agree with that everybody should get their fair shake you know um get your opportunity 100 percent. The, the 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 next person or man woman should all get the same opportunity the outcomes will all be different opportunity should all be the same let's get it fit from that so i think a lot of it, men men are having a lot of crises at the moment in terms of mental, mental health mm. suicide issues and um, their own sense of identity because i think some of the stereotypes put on men are quite limiting for them as well. I think they make men quite unhappy as well. The so devil's in the details with regards to equality because I'm a, an advocate of equality of opportunity. But and I outcomes. Think the idea, outcomes. That's an appalling doctrine. Why? Why? Of equality of opportunity. But and I outcomes. Think the idea, outcomes. That's an appalling doctrine. Why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, because well, you have to produce an unbelievably potent bureauc bureaucracy to make the ever greater and ever finer distinctions that are necessary to enforce equality of outcome. How many group differences are you going to equalize across? Is it just gender and sex? How many genders? No, so gender and ethnicity? How many genders? I think How many what, ethnicities? What are, How many races? <laughs> we'll let Aisha answer. I think what, what people are trying to do with this, and certainly as somebody who you know has looked to do, sought to sort of do this myself, I think you set yourself ambitions for, for what... Opportunity, yes. Outcome, and I said this earlier, hell no. Hell no. Fuck no. So you mean to tell me, and this this is just an example, just an example. Matter of fact, you know what, I'll, I'll use myself. I'll use myself. I'll use myself. I won't even, because I was going to go the whole female route, but I'll just use myself. So because I'm a black guy, right? Yeah, some of my ancestors, slavery, blah, blah, blah. Because of that, and you're black, when you when you apply to go get this uh, whatever, we'll just automatically approve you. But this other person over here, who has the same qualifications as you, they just aren't black. They just get denied. I don't even want that, and that's good for you know what I'm saying. That I mean, obviously in the moment that would be good for me. Oh shit, yeah, I gotta, fuck yeah. But I know that if the shoe were on the other foot, and I think that's often where people fuck up. If the shoe were on the other foot, how would you feel? You know, and I know that if the roles were flipped and this other person got an opportunity because of X, Y, and Z, but I had the same qualifications, if not a little bit better, I just didn't have that one thing and they got approved or they got the job and I didn't because of that. I know I'll be pissed. I'm like, bro, you know, so outcomes, hell no, hell no. Opportunity, hell yes. Fuck yes. What you would like to see and then you try and remove as many of the the structural barriers and mm. obstacles so you try and create that you know fair crack of the whip mm. and that equality of opportunity to see where you get to with the outcomes that, that's now fine. we are in very early stages it's only 100 years since you know women got the vote mm. in this country you know we have had a long established patriarchal society and set up for, for a long time in the world in this country so i think we have a long way to go to see where it plays out there is no country in the world where you know we really do have 
gender equality um, properly yet in terms of dis real decision making and, and real Some of the power. Scandinavian countries maybe? But I, th they're still not quite there and I think All you've right. spoken a lot about this. Scandin there's still a way to go in Scandinavia. Things are not perfect well, in I Scandinavia haven't, I haven't at all. Well I have spoken about that specifically. I've spoken about you spoke the, about the right stuff yesterday. I, you talked about the Scandinavian. Well I've spoken about the fact that you see one of the things that's happened in the analysis of the differences between men and women is that the social constructionist claim is that mm. the differences are socially constructed, mm. right? Is that it's a consequence of environment that men and women differ. But what the scientific literature indicates is that as cultures become more egalitarian, like they have in Scandinavia, the differences between men and women actually increase rather than decreasing, which is a direct repost to the social constructionist view. So they just deny all that. The biggest differences in the world in interest and temperament are between Scandinavian men and women. It's exactly the opposite of what everyone well, predicted. Can I just pick up on one thing you said a little earlier in the interview, yeah. which you said it's the moral guidance that you are, are, are focused on. You think that yeah. is particularly important. How do you square that with the behavior of perhaps arguably, you know, a prominent alpha male president of the United States, Donald Trump? Um, when his behavior, I mean, he is accused of having an affair with a porn star when his wife was pregnant. How does that fit with morally reclaiming? Um, well, you know, I would the say that was rather clearly immoral. Right. Yeah, but and, and you not, would not still, to be a target for emulation. But you not still would have voted pursue. for him over well, Hillary Clinton fair, those, as, as fair, an identity though, politics. It, the, I mean, it's just how, how do you... was on the, the table, and I said I might have voted for him on a whim. That's but all. you also said you started so. out feeling quite close to Hillary Clinton. Can I just come yeah. on, on the Very order? quickly, because we've got to move on. In a way, I don't, really, I don't care what Trump does in terms of his private life, but sure. what I don't have is him stopping or potentially stopping other women having agency over their reproductive rights and lots of men taking those decisions, It's for all example. about where the moral outrage lies and what's yeah. more morally outrageous um, in, in people's eyes. Is it his behaviour or the identity politics for you? on the? Anyway, we'll have to discuss this another time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Chase, what do you think? <laughs> Triggering snowflakes since 2013. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, listen. Um, <clears throat> Respect to Jordan Peterson, man. One thing that I took out of that um, is just the calmness in his demeanor. I absolutely loved it. I absolutely loved it. You know, um, he didn't... He didn't shout. He wasn't. He wasn't, you know, uh, 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 overbearing. He didn't try to overtake in any in any way, shape, or fashion. There was one point where he was trying to finish his statement, and the host was like, "Well, well, let 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 Aisha, you know, get get her point in." And he he just shut up and just let her go. No no arguments about it. No, you know what I mean? Like, um, I love the calm demeanor. I love just the the chill, laid back, and when, when it when it was time to strike. He struck, you know what I mean? Um, but he struck calmly, you know? He said what he had to say. He said it, he, he said it eloquently, um, but he said it in just such a calm demeanor. It was just, it was crazy to watch. It was just crazy, 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 crazy. Um, he didn't let anybody, you know, get him off kilter because um, especially in like serious debates, you know, um, and I've spoken about this in previous videos, like nowadays people resort to calling names and, you know, yelling and, and I'm like, yo, this 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 isn't gonna get us anywhere. You know, this isn't this isn't gonna get us anywhere. You know, and 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 you know, so also some people you know try to twist your words and you know you'll say like a whole a whole you know paragraph and they'll like take like just this little tiny piece of it and try to spin it to and it's just it, it's crazy. It's crazy the shit that goes on today. So I'm, I'm I'm glad to see that we have people amongst us that um that aren't that way, you know? Definitely, definitely maybe checking out some more Jordan Peterson, man. That that was that that was that was interesting right there. Interesting as hell for sure. But um as always, man, y'all let me know what you thought about it in the comment section below. Like, share, comment, and of course, hit that subscribe button before you go. I'm gonna catch y'all in the next video. I'm out.